Today we're going to talk about cell differentiation, and the goal of this video is to explain how different types of cells are formed from stem cells. So first, I want to start with a, a kind of puzzle. And here's how we can set the puzzle up. When a cell divides by mitosis, it produces genetically identical cells. That means that the cells that are produced are exactly the same with respect to their genes. But here's the thing. Multicellular organisms are made up of many different types of cells, and you can see those many different types of cells in this image. There are lots of different types, but they all have the same genes. So how can cells be genetically identical, but structurally and functionally different? This is possible through cell differentiation. So what is cell differentiation? Cell differentiation is the process by which an unspecialized cell, called a stem cell, divides many times, and certain genes in the cells that are produced are turned on or off. Those genes get turned on or off in a particular sequence, and this produces specialized cells. So we're going from unspecialized cells to specialized cells, and the way that we get there is by turning genes in those cells on or off in a particular sequence. Now, once the developmental pathway of a cell is determined, it can't alter its path and change into another cell type. So it's not like um, this cell right here that led to a pigment cell. It's not like that cell can suddenly um, take a totally different path and uh, and go to uh, a, a bone cell or a white blood cell. Okay, this leads to um, a discussion about cell potency. What is cell potency? Cell potency is the ability of a cell to differentiate into specialized cells. Different types of stem cells have different levels of potency. There are actually four levels of potency. Um, a cell can be totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent, or unipotent. Those are the four levels. I'm going to say something about each now. A stem cell that can differentiate into all types of cells within a body is called a totipotent cell. Why is it totipotent? Where does that come from? It just means total potential. It has the total potential to become any type of cell within the body. An example of a totipotent stem cell would be the zygote. The zygote and actually the first four divisions, uh, all those cells are considered totipotent. Next, you have a pluripotent. So a stem cell that can differentiate into many, but not all cell types within a body is called pluripotent. And that pluripotent word just means there's plural potential. An example of a pluripotent cell would be an embryonic stem cell. Okay, then you have a, a multipotent level. And this is going to be a stem cell that can differentiate into uh, many closely related cell types. So the key here is the types that, that this cell can differentiate to, um, they have to be pretty closely related. That's when you have a multipotent stem cell. And an example of a multipotent stem cell would be bone marrow stem cells. Last, we've got unipotent, so a cell that can differentiate into only one type of mature cell is called a unipotent cell. So in this image, you've, you can kind of see how these are divided up. Um, the, as soon as the sperm and the egg unite, um, now you're going to get a zygote. So it would be uh, totipotent and after that single cell divides even up to four times, 
uh, it will be totipotent. And so you can have this kind of outer layer here that uh, is made up of totipotent cells, but then you have this inner uh, mass of cells here, and those are going to be pluripotent. And so they can become many different types of cells, uh, but not all. And then the, the picture, unfortunately, I couldn't find a picture that completely captures all the... Um, these pluripotent cells can give rise to multipotent cells. And so an example would be cells that differentiate into the different types of cells that you find in the digestive tissues. Um, and then those cells, those multipotent potent cells, can give rise to unipotent cells. And by the time you get to unipotent cells, now we're very specialized. It, uh, the, the function and the structure of the cell is very specific. Uh, one more example would just be skin cells. Um, this would be an example of unipotent cells. Now, let's finish up by saying something about how stem cells can be useful in medicine. Stem cells can be used to replace damaged cells or even diseased cells. And um, examples of the kind of application I'm talking about here, um, stem cells might uh, be useful in treating Parkinson's disease. So um, in the case of Parkinson's disease, there are going to be nerve cells that are uh, being negatively affected. And uh, stem cells can be used to uh, differentiate into nerve cells that can replace those damaged ones. Another application would be for burn victims. So if the skin is severely damaged, those skin cells, um, if you can take a stem cell and cause it to differentiate into new skin cells, then you can actually um, help these uh, burns heal uh, with new skin. Now, one final note, the use of embryonic stem cells is controversial because uh, it requires the destruction of the embryo. And destroying an embryo, uh, that would uh, be considered a, a case of abortion. So that's part of what um, leads to some controversy around uh, the use, the use of, of stem cells for, for these kinds of purposes.